Kageyama was always a king. He had a brief moment where he was forced to pretend as if it was a bad thing, but after his teammates acknowledged him, the king was back. This stopped a push that concept forward and made Kageyama not a king but an emperor. Let's see how by starting at the very beginning. We get to see the scene right after the end of the last chapter where Kageyama tricked the jackals by pretending he was setting the ball but instead just decided to let the ball fall into the jackals court. As Hinata was getting frustrated at that point, Atsumu said something really interesting. He said that Hinata woke Kageyama up in a very daunting fashion. Now, this is a rather important statement that we will discuss more about later on. So watch this video till the end. But that's not all. In the very next panel, we see Kumini and Kandaichi discussing that Kageyama is going to head out of Japan next year. Now, this is not surprising considering Kageyama's huge talent and how he would like to prove himself everywhere. And it was also mentioned all the way back in chapter 370 when Yachi narrated that Kageyama wanted to test himself out in the foreign countries. So, this info was kinda shocking, I'll admit, but it was expected. A part of me now hopes that Furudate might expand on that lack of the story a bit more to keep Haikyuu running for a while. Anyway, I digress. We see the fourth serve from Kageyama which gets received by Hinata in the very next panel. I like the placement of the panels here. It looks like Kageyama directly shot the ball at Hinata's arm. The ball goes up as Bokuto scores with a neat spike. Then we see Atsumu doing a no-touch ace. That dude finally got a shine from his serving skills. He serves again and Hoshiyumi picks it up and Kageyama sets it to Romero who uses the block to bounce off the ball. Hinata digs in deep to connect it as we see Atsumi set the ball to Mian whose spike gets received by Hoshiyumi. The ball goes to Kageyama again who uses Hirugami in a long while to spike the ball. As all of this was happening, Yamaguchi and Yachi were discussing how Kageyama and Atsumu haven't used their fake quick attack so much this time. To which Yamaguchi responded by saying that Kageyama is inclined to use Romero and Ushishima more when they are on the sides of the court. It was at that time Hirugami spiked the ball, shocking both of them. Shukishima was thinking something interesting here. He observed that while the attacks that the Adlers were doing were distributed, the frequency of the attacks that came from the sides were higher. And it is indeed true. Like if we go back and see whenever the Adler spiked, most of the times it was Romero from the left or Ushijima from the right or Hoshiyumi who wasn't really attacking from the center. Keep this in mind as we will discuss this later. Kageyama serves again and we see Hinata receiving the ball yet again. I like how both of them reacted here. The ball went up and it was a chance ball for the Adlers. We see the three spikers from the Atlas approaching as Bokuto goes into a deep line of thought about what position will the attack come from and he concluded that he had no idea. The ball went to the center and Hirugami spikes it and the score reached 20-17 in the favor of the Adlers. Tsukishima remarks something really interesting here. He says that Kageyama used the center so less in this match that the blockers of the jackals started to spread a bit from their original formation anticipating a spiker to hit from the edges. This made their center defense weaker allowing for a relatively easy spiking opportunity for Hirugami at the center. And then we go back to the line that Atsumu said at the beginning of the chapter. He said that Hinata woke Kageyama up. When Atsumu saw Kageyama back at the national youth camp before the national spring tournament, he thought that Kageyama was a bit too nice and accommodating to his spikers and called him a goody two-shoes. We know why Kageyama did what he did. Kageyama was thoroughly rejected by his teammates in middle school because his tosses were difficult to hit and he was very harsh on his teammates about it. And after the events from his flashback, we learned that Kageyama felt very lonely and dejected. So when he was offered an opportunity again to build up connections and relationships, he bent over backwards and accommodated to his teammates' habits and techniques regardless of whether they were good or bad. After Atsumu called him a goody two-shoes, and during his experience in the practice match with Data Tech when he was in Karasuno, he refused to stoop down to his spikers' bad habits and demanded that they catch up to him. Instead of rejecting him like the teammates from Kitagawa Middle School did, Karasuno took him up on the challenge and responded positively. 
we also saw Kageyama refuting Tanaka to set him less, saying that the Karasuno team needed Tanaka's spike right now and that he is going to set to Tanaka regardless of whether he wants to spike or not. And Tanaka obeyed. That gave Kageyama the realization that if the spikers are good enough, he has the freedom to do whatever and set the ball such that his team wins. This is what Arsumu was talking about here. He is saying that Shoyo had inadvertently awakened a monster. And that is what is so scary, that they are literally fighting a monster right now. Although, I would personally comment that Kageyama had also awakened a monster inside Hinata, but that's a discussion for some other time. We see Kageyama set again and recalling all those memories where his spikers first rejected him, then when he found new spikers, they held him up and demanded excellence. Now, we see the spikers all running towards the net and waiting to hit the ball as if demanding the ball to be set to them and Kageyama doing his best set that would make the opponent blocker shaky and unable to stop the ball. Kageyama sets the ball to Hirugami once again for the third time in a row and he scores with a neat spike. The chapter ended with a panel that screamed not the return of the king but the crowning of an emperor. Kageyama is not a mere king now. With ultra talented and super strong spikers at his disposal, he is basically coordinating an entire army of monsters. So, we got another chapter showing how Kageyama is a monster setter right now. The first set showed how much of a monster Hinata has become and now we see the strengths of Kageyama. Seeing all of this, this match could go anywhere. With such powerful teams, I am so excited to see what happens next. This match is so intense, I am loving it. What did you guys think about this chapter? Comment down below with the thoughts and follow your boy on Twitter. I am Big Doc and I will see you later. You guys take care.